So in this video, we will go over the Xenophage quest within Destiny 2, and this is a more updated guide based on the quest that exists in 2024. For this quest, you are going to need Shadow Keep, and then you're going to go into Sara's Harbor. Go through Sara's Harbor and go back towards normally where you would go for either the Pit of Heresy or the Strike in this area. When you go through that, hang a left, keep going down the pathway. You're going to continue to go down that pathway, but at a certain point, right after loading screen, instead of going left where you normally go to go down the pyramid ships, go right and a little bit up. If you're not careful, you'll miss it. Once you go through there, you'll find basically four lamps. To start the quest, what you're going to want to do is you're going to light those lamps in a certain order. Back right, front left, front right, back left. Once you do that, a chest will pop up and you'll get a quest that'll let you continue to get your Xenophage. For this next part, you're gonna to need to go in Anchor of Light. If you're not familiar with Anchor of Light, I will show you briefly how to get there. But you're gonna to run to the specific building that's going to have a small orb that you can pick up. With this orb, you're gonna take it and light lamps along a specific path. I will let you listen in real quick and I will show you the path that you have to do to complete it. A couple tips is that you can use the ball to lunge yourself forward. Also, with being power crept, you don't need to worry about the enemies as much. It's just making sure you do it before the timer on the ball runs out. Once you finish this, you will need to complete four Lost Sectors. They don't have to be Legend or Master. And once you're through the, and picking up the chest, you will have to go through a door and there'll be a puzzle. It's very similar to Shirachi. It's like a, for those who are <laughs> who remember these sort of things, it's like a nine digit phone pad with one being in the upper left hand corner, five being in the, in the far, in the real middle, and then a nine being in the lower hand, right hand corner. I will show you briefly how each of these works. For K1 Logistics, the pattern is 1, then 7, then 6, then 5. For K1 Revelations, the pattern is 6, then 4, then 5 twice, 4, 8, 5, 2. For K1 Crew Quarters, it's 3, 4, 5, 8, 9 twice, and then 8 twice. And then for K1 Communion, it's 7, 9, 2, and 2. If you're not familiar with Pit of Her Heresy, really what you're going to do differently is once you get through the first encounter, you're going to go to a door that I'll show you here on the screen. That's a couple over. You'll notice that it doesn't have a chain connecting. To, you'll know that's the correct door. Be careful you're going up here because if you get in front of the other doors, they'll boop you out and you'll die. Once you go through there, you'll see a little like rune that you have to interact with. And I'll give you the next part for the next uh, part of the quest. As is normal with Pit of Heresy, You'll jump back to your normal area, and then down below, to the right of you, will be the door that you need to go to to go to the next encounter. In the next encounter, if you haven't done this before, there is a series of paths you have to go to, and you have to avoid these ogres that you can't kill. In this case, when you get in immediately, you're going to go on a path to the left, and just immediately go through there. Go through there, there's an area down below that you'll want to go to, and if you keep maneuvering through there, there's a bit of writing that you interact with. Once you interact with that bit of lighting, there's going to be a series of platforms that show up. Go across those platforms, pick up an orb, and you need to carry that orb all the way to doors all the way on the right-hand side of the map. And I'll show you the map here. The easiest way I found that is once you get the orb, there is a hole that you can go up through. Now keep in mind, there'll be some ads, so that'll be one thing. Depending on what build you use, the melee that you use against the ads will trigger any event. So if you have a melee based build, that's a good thing here because it might help you survive a little bit longer.
continue to advance to the right, being careful to hide from the ogres as they show up, light the two lamps, and then you'll come into the next encounter. So for the next encounter, you're gonna fight Volar the Tempted to finish the quest. Now, a couple tips here for doing it solo. First off, when you first go into the encounter before you kill all the adds, if you're very careful, you can actually do some initial damage before his shield goes up, before he becomes immune. So if you have something, do that. The next thing is as you go through the encounter, have a build that has survivability. Invisible would be really great, but anything that can make you survivable would be really great in this quest. The key to this quest is that the boss is only, a, you only get a short window of damage to the boss with certain elements based on a buff that you have on your character. There are four buffs. Thunderous is Arc, Abyss is Void, Fiery is Solar, and Dread is Kinetic. To do damage against the boss, you have to go into the middle and pick up an orb. You have to take that orb depending on what your buff is, and you need to put it in the corresponding area to get that, that buff for basically, I think it's like 30 seconds to do damage. Consult this map to be able to figure out the right areas. Now, I will tell you, it's not really that big of a deal. You can first off usually see a little bit. There are obviously symbols to do that. You can, if you, when you first get in the room, you can also see the color of different things, right? On the different symbols. So you can tell it from there. The other thing is worst case, you put in the wrong spot, you have a debuff that happens on you for a little bit that slows you down, does a little bit of damage. But there were power crept, it's, it's not that hard. So worst case, if you can't find it, just keep putting it until you get in the right location. Once you do that, then you know do your DPS to the boss. The boss will move around quite a bit. That makes it difficult, and you'll have ads you have to deal with. The ads aren't too bad. Just have a build that allows you to deal with that. The other thing I would recommend is whatever whatever class or subclass you use, utilize a super that does damage over time or is it a burst sort of DPS damage. That will actually help out quite a bit. So for instance, if you're on Hunter and you have gathering storm that'd be a great thing to use on her that would stick to her do damage over time if you're on void on a warlock you could really simply use your nova bomb to do a ton of damage and so what i did in this is i just made sure i had something like i used galahorn for solar because even if i don't hit her like if i hit something else i know the wolf pack rounds will hit her so again with that Usually you can burn her down in a couple rounds. Again, it's not that bad because it is not. this is not a, a counter that's really kept up with the times as far as the power creep. Do that, go back to Eris, pick up your Xenophage. Xenophage is a great weapon. Again, it does really good DPS, especially for characters who don't have other raid exotics or other things. And it's not that hard of a quest to complete, even as a solo player. So do that, get your Xenophage, and you're done. That's the video. If you liked the video, feel free to like it, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.